What's up guys, Zach from Wire Customs and today I'm going to show you how to identify a flathead if it's just a bare block. The very first identifier is looking at the back of the block to see if it has a big embossed bell housing or not. 1933 all the way to 1949 all had these built-in bell housings for the transmission on it. Just like this one. This one's a 91A. That's what I would consider the easiest thing to notice about the block. Big bell housing on the back, flat, no bell housing for the transmission. That's a big, big difference between the two uh, blocks. If it's like this one in the video, it's a 59A or the earlier blocks before 59A, which are pretty much similar, just different designations. To be able to tell between the 59A and the other earlier blocks, we're going to look at the water jackets. We're going to look at how many head bolts are in the middle where the water jackets go. So now as we look at this one, this one has only two head bolts where the water jackets are. Um, the earlier engines had three, one, two, then three at the very bottom. They were more spaced out. So 1933 to about 1937, that's when you see the three bolts in the middle. Now if you see the three bolts in the middle, that's considered a 21 stud block. And if you see only two like this one in the video, it's considered a 24 stud block. Depending on your application, the 24 studs are more desirable than the three bolts, the 21 studs for sure. So 38 through 46 is the 24 studs, but not every single 24 stud is a 59A. That's a very common misconception, so here's how we can tell the difference. So only 1946 to 1948 are the 59As or 59ABs. On the top of the bell housing on the back, it should have 59A, 59 um, stamped in the back of the bell housing. If you look on the right side of the bell housing and it's stamped 81 or 91, that's the pre 59As. The pre 59As is 1938 through 1940. Now here's where it can get confusing. A lot of 1938 to 1940 engines, not all, have a raised intake surface right here. Now, as you can see, this one's completely flat. Um, but it's still a 1939 motor. So watch out for the, those differences. If you're looking at it, and this portion right here on the outline is raised, it's most definitely a 38 through 40. But if it's not raised, it doesn't mean that it's not a 38 through 40. So all pre-1948 engines, they all have the same water jackets. These triangulated water jackets like this. Um, that's a dead giveaway. Even the 21 studs with the three bolts, they still have the same shape water jackets. The ABAs that are very extremely desirable, they're all circle. Each one of these is circle, so that's a dead giveaway on the APA. So what I would consider the newer engines, the 1949 to 1954, uh, they actually had the serial uh, number casted on the intake portion on the right rear portion of the block right here in this area. So there's four different displacement sizes for the flathead blocks. There's the 136, uh, the 221 cubic inches, the 239, and I believe 337 cubic inches. But don't worry about that. The great thing about the flatheads is all, most of all those parts are interchangeable when it comes to the crank. The crank has been the biggest drive of changing the cubic inches on the flatheads. So all the 17 stud engines are all the 136 cubic inches. Uh, that's what they came with stock. Um, if you have a longer crank than that, it's been rebuilt or upgraded. So 1932 to 1937, I believe, were all the 221 cubic inch engines. So to 1938 to 1948, I believe, had both the 221 and the 239 cubic inch engines. The 221, the 239, and 255 can only be um, identified by measuring the stroke of the piston. The 221 has a 3.75 inch stroke. The 239 has a 3.18 inch stroke. And the 255 is the one that has a four inch stroke. That's uh, usually a mercury crank. Those are the ones you really, really want to keep a hold of. Now, of course, there's way more information than this to tell the difference between which block you have. Uh, mercury had multiple size cubic inches, uh, different strokes. Um, usually the mercury blocks are very desirable. The ABA is probably the most desirable. Then a couple of old school guys like me really like the pre-ABA flatheads, like the one in the video. If you have any more questions about like what rods you should get, what crank, um, the different various heads that these originally came with, some of them were more desirable than others. Um, vast, vast amounts of information that I can't put in a video, make it 15, 20 minutes long. But please shoot them down in the comment sections. I'll answer all the questions. So thank you for watching.
Please like, subscribe, and share. Have a great day.